All right, what's going on, guys? Try back again here to bring you another video. This one's going to be doing my weekly review for the second episode of part two for Fear of the Walking Dead season seven. Now, for episode 10, it is called Morning Cloak. All right, and possible spoiler warning for this one as we're doing the uh, review for this episode. So episode 10, uh, Morning Cloak. So they sort of released both episodes together for the second half of Fear of the Walking Dead Season 7. And uh, in this episode, we get kind of another focus-off episode on just a few characters. Uh, I tend to think that what they're probably doing is I think they're kind of saving up budget for maybe some big episodes at the end of season seven or maybe just that you know some of the bigger episodes they did in the first half of season seven for fear uh, have kind of made it so that these episodes here are not as uh, are it's not as big not as grand big explosions and stuff like this I'm sure that's probably coming here for the end of this uh, season as we see this battle between uh, Morgan and Alicia and the tower group strands tower group kind of go down it's sort of being kind of we're in the middle right now until we kind of uh, see that so we're getting some of these more focused off episodes so I have seen some feedback already for episode 9 it looks like unfortunately a lot of people did not like episode 9 at all um, which is unfortunate I liked it but I thought it was like just okay for a mid-season premiere uh, nothing too crazy or anything like that but again I think they're saving some of the good stuff for near the end of season 7 for Fear of the Walking Dead so this episode Morning Cloak uh, really strange uh, choice of characters to focus on in this one we get a new character whose name is uh, Ali and uh, we also have so he's so he's a new character I guess he's like 15 years old or something so he's like a kid uh, from the tower who basically wants to prove himself to Strand and Howard and the others. We don't even have Strand in this episode, uh, funny enough. So some of these episodes here really feel like they're kind of limiting the cast or they're limiting the amount of... Um, you know, different people we get to see in each one. And I've speculated that I think that's probably a budget saving thing. Uh, again, I hope it's because I, I think they're going to do something big later on. But this is kind of the second season they've been doing these episodes where they're very, they're very sectioned off. You only have like a few uh, name characters per episode. And then a lot of times they're bringing in new characters. Um, like when we see episode nine, we see Paul come in, but then and Arno, who's also really a new character too. Um, but then a lot of these characters are not surviving past uh, their their episode they're brought into. Another example would be Will at the beginning of season seven, and uh, him as well too. You know, he's he's in like a few episodes, but again, his introductory episode is the season seven premiere, and he's also killed off in that episode. So we're seeing this as a kind of recurring trend. Um, but it did really surprise me in this one, and, and midway through this episode as I was watching it I was thinking like this is not a good episode at all I was not enjoying it I thought it was really a strange uh, you know idea to focus on you know a new character uh, Ollie and then to have uh, Charlie as kind of the uh, co co-star for this one I just thought it was a weird um, you know it, it, it was a, a weird choice for a whole episode you know you tend to think like with Walking Dead or Fear of the Walking Dead you know even if you have kind of a bottled off episode which is kind of in some ways what these are now um, they have some big episodes but you know uh, for the like nuke episodes and stuff like that but for a lot of them they're very sectioned off they're very selective with how many characters are in each one um, in this one the ending did surprise me actually and uh, I, I actually kind of like turned around on it when we got to the end of the episode. I was like, "Whoa!" Because I, I didn't, I didn't think they were going to do that. Which is, they introduce uh, all these spoiler warning, like I say, and he kind of through the episode it plays a bit like a, a World Beyond episode almost, where you have these two kids. Uh, one is 15, one is 13, with Charlie being 13 now, and. Um, they're basically kind of going through on this uh, little bit of an adventure they've been set up on to go and get parts for the elevator to repair one of the broken elevators that was broken in the prior fight with Morgan and with uh, the group. So uh, that's the kind of cover story. And then beyond that, Howard has given Ollie kind of a special mission, which is to try and figure out from Charlie, um, you know, what she's really doing there. Has she been sent there by Morgan? 
to infiltrate the place to shut off the light and you know so all the walkers will leave and then somehow maybe they kill down all the walkers or they just lead them away in order to make the tower more accessible because this sea of walkers outside of the tower has made it to where um, you know it's it's very hard to sneak in it's very hard to access it so um, this is basically the storyline Howard uh, is and, and I do like Howard I think he's a very cool sort of evil Alfred type of character he makes me think of like an evil version of like a butler or something like this like you have Batman you have Alfred um, you know Howard is kind of uh, strands uh, Alfred in, in some ways when he's gone he makes the uh, when strands gone Howard makes the decisions everything like that in this one and so that's kind of what we have. So, so you have kind of, you almost have a skeleton crew for this episode. And some of the episodes of Fear have been like that this, these last two years, especially um, for whatever, whatever reason. I, I don't know if it's viewership or something, budgets, what, whatever, the, uh, whatever the reason is for it. So um, the episode did really surprise me. And in the end, I was actually like, wow, this is actually, you know, quite intense. And I did not suspect that it was it was kind of an unexpected. So similar with uh, actually with Will earlier on the season, uh, we have a, a, a character focus on Ollie. He's, he's a kid and everything, and he develops a relationship with Charlie. So he kind of goes back and forth on it. He wants to be a ranger, and then through the episode and as things are playing through, he does discover from Charlie that she's been sent there by Morgan in order to shut the light off, so they can try to, you know, clear clear out the outside of the uh, of the tower to make it more accessible if they're going to uh, strike or they're going to try to take it over right or get into it or whatever so um so that's charlie's mission she tells ollie ollie kind of relays that to howard but not exactly and not entirely he flip-flops on it when he gets back he kind of goes the other way they develop somewhat of a like a teenage uh, uh relationship which is kind of like cute but it's also kind of awkward at the same time just based on their age but I, I kind of like it because it's kind of cute in a, you know, in like a World Beyond kind of way. Maybe like if World Beyond was done right, <laughs> you know, something like that, then it would be something like this. And so we see the episode go through. So she she gets hurt by radiation. She's got to be helped by June to heal up and, and feel better. Uh, Charlie does. And then, you know, as they're kind of, they've developed this relationship and Ollie has developed feelings for her, uh, he decides he's going to go ahead and do what uh, Charlie was to do. Um, and so he goes up to the roof to shut the light off and Howard catches him and kind of knows like, okay, the, the girl has turned him, unfortunately. So, which he may have suspected probably could happen or would happen just based on his age and everything. And uh, maybe understanding a background about Charlie and how she's kind of crafting stuff. Not that she's using him to, to do that, but just that that would be an indicator that Howard has to be really careful here with, with Ollie because this is not something that he's used to. And so he may, uh, he may, uh, you know, uh, develop feelings and stuff like this. And he's right, that, that ends up being the case. So now this is the part that surprised me quite a bit where he decides, Howard decides he's going to throw Ollie, <laughs> basically shoot him or throw him off the uh, tower in, in quite the brutal fashion. And it seems like they're, they're making a, uh, this is a repeat thing that Strand and Howard, if someone's a problem in the tower or someone is really, um, you know, really a loose, um, you know, uh, a loose end, they are pretty vicious. They go ahead and throw them right off the towers. So, so <laughs> Dictator Strand and Howard will not hesitate to throw your ass right off the top of the tower into a sea of the dead like Strand kind of does with Will without even really uh, hesitating much, right? And we see something like that here. And it does make you feel kind of bad because Ali's just a kid. He's like 15 years old. And you see Howard doing this. And then later, Howard even threatens to do the same to Charlie. Uh, so it's, and June gets in the way and kind of stops him. Uh, so, you know, you have a kind of a tyrannical leadership at the tower where they're just going to throw people off, off the top of the tower, killing them instantly. Um, if they don't, you know, uh, play the game, if they don't uh, do what's right for the tower, um, you know, and, and so that's what they're doing. So, um, it's 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 an interesting episode halfway through i'm like this is an awful episode <laughs> this is not good why did they think it was good to focus on ollie and focus on charlie in this one but we see like a younger maybe a younger version of what we see with with will and leisha we see that with charlie and, and ollie in this one and you know surprisingly 
a similar kind of outcome where Howard is the one this time uh, to throw uh, to throw Ollie off of the tower in this one. I was kind of hoping, I don't know if they mentioned it in the um, episode Insider Explained or whatever, um, we are to understand that Ollie is dead right now and he's been thrown off and, he, and he's gone. I think it would be interesting actually if maybe he landed like somewhere like in a net or something or he landed like in a spot where he was hurt but he was not exactly dead, something like that. That could be kind of cool because I thought he has potential. He's young and everything. But one of the things with fear that they've been doing the last few years, it's not even two years. Back in season five, they did this too. They would introduce a lot of new characters and they would not always uh, follow up with them. So you had the group that they run into in season five of like the youngins. You guys remember this in season five of Fear, there's a bunch of kids everywhere and like Alicia runs into them and stuff, but they don't go back to them. They kind of have them there and then they kind of disappear and they're no longer in the story after that. Um, that's one thing that's about Fear that's kind of a bit strange is that they introduce a lot of characters and sometimes they kill off certain ones that you wouldn't really expect. And then sometimes you have one like Wendell who it seems obvious that there's no way he's gonna survive the zombie apocalypse. Uh, just based on his disability and everything, it'd be like it'd be like impossible for him out in the open to survive. And he actually is one that does survive. So it's kind of an interesting backwards game. So in this one, Morning Cloak, uh, at the end, I did like the episode. I thought it was really a edgy way to finish it off because usually if you're going to do like a romantic like teenage episode, it ends with like you know butterflies and sure, like that's the ending. But they twisted it, and then it's like, what? So it surprised me at the end that they went that route. Uh, but it, it's not the first time. I, I should have expected it because it wasn't. The, it's not the first time they've done this. You know, Howard is a train of throwing people off the top of the tower all the time. It's like, you disagree, it's throwing you off the tower. It's like, it's throw, <laughs> doesn't like the way you look at throw Throw them off the tower. So... Um, it's, uh, it's what it is. But I liked what they did with June in this one where she stands up with Charlie and basically saves her life, I want to say. Um, and it's, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's definitely uh, a good ending to the episode, I'll say. So in terms of score, I'm going to give this one a 9 out of 10, actually. I did really like this episode. Uh, I thought it was more interesting than episode 9. I thought it was better than episode 9. But you're, you're leading with characters who, like... In, Ollie's a new character. We have no idea who he is, uh, nor do we really care much. So there's that. And then Charlie also is a little bit tricky because they're they're giving her episodes. They're 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 giving her time and everything like that, and that's fine, I guess. But the thing is, is we got to remember she was introduced killing Nick. So it's kind of like um, you know, and and we can kind of sort of sympathize in a way. But a lot of people really like Nick. There was even a mention of him on in the stream this weekend. Um, people cor corrected me. I don't know. I was thinking season two, maybe because. They walk through Mexico in season two with the blood and everything. It's kind of cool. But yeah, Nick's last episode, season four, she kills Nick, right? Charlie kills Nick. So um, happy to hear that Madison is returning. But yeah, so she's the one who did that. So it's kind of hard for us to watch an episode for her if we're fans of Nick and just let that go and forget about it, whatever. But um, I don't know, man. It, it's just, it's really weird to me the way they're having a lot of these episodes in fear now the last couple of years. They've had some incredible episodes, some really big episodes that are amazing, like the Virginia li uh, lineup episode. That was like very Negan-esque and stuff. Very cool. Some awesome stuff. So they kind of flip-flop between. They give you some of these really awesome episodes, and then some of these other ones here are like, it, it seems kind of obvious to me that they're kind of trying to save save budget, it seems like, just with the amount of characters that are in them. Like, would it have hurt the episode if you threw, like, a couple other characters in there or something, just to make things interesting? Like, if you threw uh, Dwight and Sherry in there in this episode somehow, or you did something else like that, might have made it a little bit, broke it up a little bit. So it, did, it didn't drag in the middle with just having the two, but... It's what it is. Um, you know, it, there's only so many people watching Fear nowadays, so maybe that's what they have to do going forward. And this is kind of the, the way it's going to be until the series ends or, you know, season eight or nine or whatever, maybe 10. We'll see. But maybe this will be how it is for the rest of the series due to them having to, uh, you know, kind of uh, control for budget. Maybe that's why. So if they do some elevator exploding and uh, crazy episodes with nukes and stuff, then after they have to balance that out by doing like selective roster episodes where you have a, a Charlie episode, which is what this is, as strange as that sounds. But I, I didn't dislike it. I was very surprised by it. I was like, wow, this is actually really, this is really surprising, really good episode. It's really, uh, really crazy. But depends how you feel about the teenage romance stuff. Depends if you like that or you think it's like uh, blah. Depends. Um, 
but it's just strange to me. At least we got to see June at the end or whatever. But again, that's kind of the consistent theme where you get, like you go to the end of episode nine and then Morgan shows up just in the last couple of minutes. Again, I don't know if there's a technicality there that like, you know, you don't have Morgan throughout the whole episode. You just have him for a few minutes and that somehow saves budget or something. I'm not sure. But I, I'm still going to give a 9 10 because I, I, the ending, I was like, uh, you know, I was shocked. I and, and, you know, I did not see that at all. And uh, coming, I thought that Ollie was going to be set up to be like a, a survivor we'd see, you know, throughout the episodes, like in it, like throughout the rest of the season or something. And I was shocked the way they went with it with Howard. That was a shocking twist at the end. And you don't want to see him do it because he's a kid, right? So it adds a factor of you want to see him survive, even if you're not maybe that interested in all of his episodes or something, if he survives out a few episodes or whatever. He's still a kid, so you don't want to see that happen, right? Still, too. Same with Charlie, too. She did kill Nick, but we don't necessarily want to see Charlie be killed off either. So it's a little bit tricky. But that's my score for the episode because I was super surprised by the end of it, even though it did drag throughout. I'm not going to take away because I, I understand that, like, you know, they have to conserve. If they're going to do a big war episode where the tower's exploding and stuff, then we probably have to have some of these other episodes here that are not so big in the middle and save for maybe a big finale. I hope. I, I hope there's a big finale for it because if every episode is like these two for the whole thing, it's like, oh, man, that's not going <laughs> to be that good. But we'll see. Anyway. Leave your comments below. Let me know uh, what you guys thought about this one. Also to add, Howard is like unbelievably creepy. Like he's like creepy to like a, just another level. I don't even know what to say. He's so creepy. It's like, uh, he's fantastic. He's fantastically creepy. That's my score for Morning Cloak. A surprisingly awesome episode at the end. But definitely I understand the drag in the middle and, and at the beginning. And if people are like, I'm not watching this is a Charlie episode. I'm a Nick fan. I don't even want to see it. Then I understand that too. If you like this video, please thumb it up below, share, favorite, and subscribe at the bottom if you're new. That's it for this one. I'll see you guys again soon for another. As always, this is Trev, and I'm saying peace later, guys. See you soon.